Hello everyone, this is 3D Printed Animatronic Creature, Part 42, Silicone Skin Casting. Look, I hope y'all are doing well. I just wanted to go over what I've been doing, casting these silicone skins. There's a lot of pre-setup, you know, you got to make sure that you you spray the outside of these with a, you know, mole release. I mean, this is important. You cannot never forget this. Each time that you cast a skin, you must do this. And the underside too, you need to make sure because if it leaks through, it's gonna not, it's gonna stick. But I spray these a couple of times and just give them a good coat. But I let them, I let them dry between coats, you know. Uh, I'll give them a good 30 minute. But once again, after I, I did the molds with a release, I gave a good coat. Now, this is the first run of me doing a skin. The very first skin run, you just really don't know how it's going to go. Now, I did measurements and things like that as far as pouring in salt to make a measurement of this, how much silicone I'm going to be using. Now, I want to make sure that I'm also putting a light spray on this mother mold area because I'm trying to avoid any kind of leaks. It shouldn't leak. It should be great. But I just want to make sure it's going to separate. But right here, you see where I've removed some of that flash area there and you just don't want any silicone to go inside there and then that way if there's if there's no release there it would stick and i might have told you that i did a salt test just a quick really salt don't like silicone but you know it's just a really quick measurement but i wanted to get a measurement of how much silicone i was going to be using for this and it was just an estimate well it was a little more than eight ounces so but I'm doing a trial kit, but I have two kits right here, the Equiflex 10 from Smooth On. But I wanted to make sure that I had enough, you know, and I have two kits here. And if it was to be over, you know, if it was going to be over the measurement, I would have the second kit to go by. I was trying to keep the design to where I could get, you know, one trial kit. Well, I'm going to mix the B first with the, with the pigment. And just get now this is the very first run but i wanted to make sure that <clears throat> i wanted to test the measurements of how much is in each bottle and i was surprised there's a little bit more than eight and so maybe i could do it for with just one you know one kit and this is what i was trying to do so i want a little bit extra from what I'm, you know, doing the first run. I rather it overflow or or waste a little bit or just sacrifice it. But as you see here, this is my measurement. Now I am using two containers because I wanted to mix my silicone pigment to make sure because they that's what they say in you know smooth on. You know, you mix it in the in the B component. And I'm using this silicone colorant right here, and I've been using it for you know a couple of years, and I seem to like it. But I'm just 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 doing a guess just trying to get some kind of skin tone and when i add the other uh part a to it it's gonna kind of give it a translucent and kind of weaken that color a little bit but i'm just testing and playing around and just getting everything kind of a feel on doing the first run now with this silicone the ecoplex 10 you really do need to degas it i mean vacuum it and uh <clears throat> And as you see here, I bring it up to the top and I'm just going to fast forward a little bit. And I did this twice like they recommended. And you got a mix time of three minutes. And also you have a pour time. And this is what got me on this first run of five minutes. So I demolded de this first one right here. And, uh, and this picture here is the second one. So I just wanted, I didn't take a whole lot of pictures of this first one, but you'll see me here demolding this first one. And you'll see where I read into the problems because towards the end, it started to set up on me and it wouldn't go down my pore hole or my bent hole. But as you notice, it's short on the chest piece area. And here's some of the flash area, as you see, is, as far as the seam area, it really turned out well. I was pleased with this test, even though it did fail. I understand you're going to make mistakes. I do. 
and I'm just trying to correct them. So <clears throat> what I'm going to do here, as you see here, I do have a bubble under the chin, and that was kind of like, okay, but when I'm pouring, now, uh, as you see here, here's another uh, seam test. Now, this is not me removing anything, but I can just, I got that bolt there so it will focus in on on that area there because translucent it, it doesn't want to focus right but overall i'm really happy with it now this seam here is on top of the head where i did the sculpture to cover up some of the 3d you know topology but i, I i'm pleased with it it really turned out now <clears throat> i can touch up some of this and plus i'm going to probably have hair on this creature but uh Everything seems to line up, and you can see the detail on this brow, and I'm really impressed with it. I mean, the mold did good, and I'm happy with it. I just wanted to get a, you know, a complete, full, full first cast of the silicone skin. But there were just little things I just needed to work out. But you see me here, I'm, I'm peeling this away, and just to show, you know, it's, it's still stuck to the, to the core and I just have to slowly remove it but I'm really overall I'm happy with it but what got me was the five minute working time and and I was kind of shocked you know I thought I'd have a little bit more time you know you mix for three minutes you degas and then you degas again real quick but as you see me here just peeling away from all the sockets for the brows and it just It'll just peel away, and then I'll have this mask. Now, it's hard for me to film the process of me actually pouring things because, I, once again, I have a five-minute window just to pour it in there, and I just want to make sure I get it full. But I poured this last night, and, uh, and this morning, this is what you see of me demolding it. But and, and I put a different, you know, coloring kind of my flesh tone and then when you add the a part to it you kind of realize what true color you will have now once again i will be painting this but uh and i put it in that five gallon bucket and you'll see maybe later to where i'm in a two and a half gallon bucket and i have some <clears throat> some trash bags in there with some tiles inside of them just to support it so i can do a tilt method but once again i'm I'm taking all these little screws out so we can demold this this mold here. And uh, but as you see here, I d it does have it does stick somewhat, but it, it will peel away and it will be clean. And as you see here, I'm removing the front part, and this one here actually came out really good. But I do have a bubble on the chin, and I'm going to explain that here. What happens is, is that, you know, I am pouring this upside down. And when, when you pour it upside down, that just shows me that there's a light undercut underneath the chin. And for me to correct this, what I need to do is, is tilt it more towards the end of the pour. And that way I can... Because once again, it's got the core in there, then the skin space. And then when you have it upside down, any other bubbles might accumulate there later and build up a patch of bubbles. But I'm thin here on the back. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of remove some of these. Uh, if you see those, the pink knobs on both sides of the back, I'm going to open that up with a knife in the mold. And uh, I'm going to cut away a little bit so I have a better flow. And I don't know if that's just, a, it's just too thin there in my design or what. But as you see here, this is how much I'm having to pour. And I want it to go in that thin skin area. And I was going to open it up a little bit more so I'll have better flow. <clears throat> but I'm happy with the results. There's a few bubbles, like you see that one where it was really thin there, but sometimes bubbles will stick to a certain area and they won't move. I have a bubble there, and then I have a bubble 
like right here it's kind of hard to see with the base plate the way right there in the in the chin but and, and you can patch them but i'm just going to try to avoid that but this is what i'm saying if i pour this upside down air is going to trap right underneath there now we're not seeing the core inside but it's easier to see it this way so <clears throat> i just trying to get this thing poured in the five minute time and then i can do a tilt and even use stoppers in the other two vents so i can get that air out of there you know as soon as possible but right here is where i plan on cutting some and just remove some of that where it doesn't hit that barrier and flow down slowly but i'll cut out some of that but i'll i'll leave the the 3d printed area uh hole I'll leave it alone, but I'm just going to open that up on the next pour. So that will be the third, the third run, but that will be later. I'm going to order some more, uh, Equifax 10, but, uh, but as you see here, here's this first skin on the animatronic. I did a test and you'll see that where the lips will eventually close, but I'm just, uh, the teeth are really, really loose there. But, uh, and once again, a lot of times, y'all, I will film stuff or I'm thinking that I'm filming and I just, I miss footage, but here's the, here's the teeth. And what I did was, is I secured them with a little glue stick, just not permanent set, but here's me taking off the skin and it, it's pretty neat though to watch this process, but you have to slowly this lift this skin up a little bit, you know, to get rid of the stickage there and, and then slowly just peel away and you'll see it right here i slow it down now i'm removing from the sockets of the brow again and i'm just slowly peeling it away and you'll start to see see it it's a, it's pulling away on its own by gravity but i just slowly remove it and i'm happy with this skin uh the flesh tone yeah it's okay but i wish i could go a little lighter on it and that much brown maybe a little bit more tan like but i'm really happy with it but it peels off the socket of the of the lip mechanisms and all of them have their own socket but uh as you see here i got it on the animatronic i did film me <clears throat> at least i thought i was filming it of me putting it on the animatronic but uh, it's basically you're turning the mask inside out and and just putting the face and you stretching it over but overall, I'm really happy with the results. But I'm I'm gonna change it to where I can get a better better color and and maybe get rid of that bubble. But once again, we might have to patch. But look, I hope y'all like and please thanks for all the subscribers, likes, and comments. Later.